Good evening. This is Strange Love, and I'm your host, Cami Chaos. Welcome, babies. Good evening. I'm Cami Chaos, welcoming you to another tech edition of Strange Love Live. As always, I'm joined by Dr. Normal. Hello. And this week's guest is the one and only Aaron Hockley. And thank goodness there's only one. <laughs> I don't know if there's enough room in the world for two of you, Aaron. We could have had Mr. Hockley on the show to talk about very many things, and we've considered them all in turn, but we decided to have him come on the show to talk to all of you about WordCamp Portland. Yeah, I think the original plan was that I was going to come on the week before WordCamp and try and drum up some last-minute interest so we could hopefully get more people going to the conference, but that's not really an issue anymore. No, as a matter of fact, if they tried to show up, you would have to turn them away. Yes, we're going to have a large bouncer at the door. Ooh, that's Oh, <laughs> that doesn't sound good. <laughs> I wonder if I could just wear really tall shoes and get that job. I like telling people to go away. Go away. There you oh, go. that's bad. Okay, never mind. Cami Chaos is nice, yada, yada, yada. So we talked earlier about this word camp. So when's Excel camp? <laughs> <laughs> so funny, so funny. And and no, it's not actually about words. I've I've had a request as well that they'd be more interested if it was more about, you know, language and etymology than than blogging software. So But the good news about Portland is we have a conference for everything. So if you want a word a conference about language or, go create one have fun mm-hmm. well let me get the particulars out of the way so that we don't have to ask you what they are if you want more information you go to wordcampportland.org wordcamp is saturday september 27th from 8 30 a.m till 9 p.m oh and it's at cube space it's at cube space as all good portland tech conferences are they're an awesome host mm-hmm. eva and david are great people to work with and it'll be fun now i would like to know about the origins of wordcamp not specifically WordCamp Portland, although that's fine as well. Why did WordCamp... Well, first of all, it's not Microsoft Word. It's not about words. It's about WordPress. Right. It's about WordPress, the blogging software, which was written a few years ago, um, like many you know, good internet software packages by some teenage kid who thought it'd be cool to write something. Uh, so that was Matt Mullenweg, who wrote WordPress. Uh, he's now the boss man at a company called Automatic, which their primary... Um, the primary thing they're known for is they're the company that does WordPress. They're the ones who own and host WordPress.com. Um, they manage the Akismet WordPress anti-spam plugin and a few other things, but by and large, Automatic is WordPress. I don't know the origins of the original WordCamp, but it's it's relatively new. Um, there's a lot of tech conferences on a lot of different topics throughout the country. The first WordCamp was actually only... Um, last year in 2007 in San Francisco and they got a bunch of WordPress enthusiasts together and had a I believe the first one was a one-day WordPress conference called WordCamp. Since then it's spread and there have now been oh I should have researched this but I want to say probably between 10 and 20 different WordCamps that have happened throughout the world and throughout the country. Um, There's been ones in Dallas and you know, across overseas in Hamburg and all sorts of interesting places. Um, so they've spread out. Um, that's kind of the origins of WordCamp uh, as a whole. Uh, WordCamp Portland actually started um, at a beer and blog, of course, because all good Portland ideas mm-hmm. start at beer and blog. They do. Um, or on Twitter. Or on Twitter, of course. We use Twitter when we're not at Beer and Blog for the other, you know, however many hours there are in a week mm-hmm. other than 4 to 6 p.m. on Friday. Yeah. So, and I hope, hopefully I get the people right, but I believe it was myself, uh, Kelly, Verso, Banana Leaf Fishbones, and whatever name she's also using, uh, Reed Beals and Chris O'Rourke were sitting around a table at the Green Dragon at a Beer and Blog talking something about WordPress and... WordCamp came up, and one of us, I don't even remember who, made a comment about, we should have WordCamp in Portland. And we all kind of said, well, yeah, that'd be cool. So we put together, I I created a Google group um, just to kind of see if there really was any interest in it. Um, I've 
put on a couple events before, um, but I wasn't really sure whether there'd really be, you know, enough interest for WordCamp to be something <laughs> that would happen in Portland. So we created a Google group and published that URL out to a lot of our, you know, the normal tech circles on Twitter and through Beer and Blog and such, and ended up with a bunch of people on the Google group, kind of getting ideas. Did we want to do a you know, very planned, organized conference? Did we want to do an unconference? Uh, one day or two, was it going to be free? Were we going to charge people who should come? What are we going to talk about? Had some planning on the Google group, ended up with a core set of volunteers that put it together and made it happen. And I guess next week we'll find out how well it goes. But I'm really excited by all the energy around so, it. So explain to people, we've heard this term several times, what's an unconference? So an unconference is a conference without a lot of planning about the internals of the conference. And by that I mean uh, probably the most well-known unconference is Bar Camp, which uh, started as a response to O'Reilly Media's Foo Camp, which was a invite-only tech conference. And a bunch of people thought, you know, we've got a lot of bright ideas too. It sucks we didn't get an invitation. Let's, you know, kind of rebel against Foo Camp by organizing a Bar Camp. And at bar camp, there wasn't an agenda. Everybody showed up. Um, if you go to bar, I believe if you go to barcamp.org, you can find all about bar camp. Um, but there's kind of four guiding principles of a bar camp and an unconference. This is where you explain how a conference works without an agenda. Exactly. So <laughs> you get everybody together. Kind of the general pattern is that they put together a big kind of scheduling grid with a whole bunch of different spaces available for sessions to happen in and time slots. And people go add their ideas to the grid. Um, at Bar Camp Portland this year, for example, it was literally a giant grid on a wall drawn out, you know, lined out by masking tape. And people put giant neon colored post-its on the wall uh, for the sessions that they want to do. Anybody can propose a unconference session. It can be a topic that you want to talk about or teach yourself. It can be just an idea of something you want to talk about, but maybe you don't know a lot, but you want to get other people who are interested together. Um, and so it sounds kind of goofy, but until you've been to one, you know, it sounds like chaos. There's a little bit of chaos, but it actually comes together fairly well because sounds like chaos. I, yes. I like a little chaos in my life. <laughs> so, um, but you actually do like at WordCamp. You actually do have some folks who are coming to speak. So you've got the the post-it notes and the suggested topics, but you also have some people who are coming there to present. Correct? Yeah, we ended up going. Um, there was quite the spirited debate on the mailing list about should WordCamp be totally pre-planned, or should it be an unconference? Most of the past word camps, the, the big ones in San Francisco and the other ones around the com- country, uh, have been totally pre-planned. Everybody comes with a known agenda, a known set of speakers, and here's what you're going to talk about. Um, on the other hand, Portland has a very kind of unconferency spirit in its tech conferences. We like unconferences. Um, a lot of what like the Legion of Tech does is unconferency, and so we went back and forth on how to do WordCamp Portland, and we ended up kind of settling on a hybrid. Um, our morning sessions and our afternoon sessions are pre-organized, pre-planned. We've got some great speakers coming in, and then the evening sessions are going to be unconference style. So. Oh, I thought Dr. Normal had another question, but Dr. Normal didn't have another question. <laughs> I'm wrangling the chat room <laughs> right now. So when you, you, when, you went, when you went into it and you said, yay, Portland should have a WordCamp, all these other people have had WordCamps, what was your goal? What did you want to get out of it? What did you want the attendees to get out of WordCamp? Wait, there's supposed to be a point? No. Um, no, there doesn't have to be a point, but maybe a goal. So <laughs> as far as a goal, my goal in putting the conference together was to just create an environment where we could get a whole bunch of people together that are passionate about WordPress and blogging and hopefully provide an environment where they're able to share their knowledge, share their ideas, and that everybody will walk away either having learned something or helped somebody learn something or at least gotten some good ideas on you know where to take their blog or their, their blogging to the next level. So now we're going to talk a little bit about WordPress because <clears throat> Cammy has questions. Aren't you supposed to save these uh, for, for WordCamp? 
No. No, 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 no. I no, this will be your own private word this camp. This is right my here. own private. I've got two of the word camp people in the room with me, and dang it, I won't get answers while I can. Okay? There we go. So, uh, about a year ago, I made a WordPress account. And, and I went into it. And I won't get into the fact that I can't get the design because I know that there's some stuff that I'll be figuring out at the conference. And that's fine with me. But my question is this. I've had a love-hate relationship with Blogger for two years now. Mm-hmm. Um, there are days and I'm like, oh, Blogger, I love you. Thank you for letting me schedule my posts. Thank you for letting me do this and that and the other thing. And then there's days like today where I'm trying to write a follow-up blog post to something and I can't even save it. It, you know, lets me log in. It lets me look at stuff. But, oh, God forbid I actually save a blog post anywhere. And then there's days that it posts things without me telling it to. I, you know, I That's have a my bonus issues. feature. I have my issues with it. But I've heard you swear at WordPress a time or two over Twitter. It's not perfect. I mean, it's like any other software package out there. And I've, uh, honestly, I've never had a blog hosted on Blogger. I know lots of people who have. Um, but I've used WordPress, I've used movable type, uh, way back in the day I had a live journal account. So, so Aaron, where, where, but where do you host, do you actually host on WordPress or because WordPress could be hosted on your own servers, correct? Right. It's, it's an open source piece of software, but you basically have two options. You can either host it through wordpress.com, which offers free blog hosting, um, using automatics servers. You have Quite a few configuration options. Um, it's free. You don't have to maintain any of the infrastructure. So you can go write your blog posts, get them published. It's so cool. far like Blogger. So far like Blogger. Right. The other option is to download the WordPress code and upload it to the server of your choice, uh, if you have a web hosting account somewhere else, and set it up, install it. You have to maintain the infrastructure, but... The trade-off is that you then have complete control over it. You can install whatever plugins you want. You can use whatever themes you want. Um, you know, you have complete control over it, meaning that you can do really awesome things with it. On the other hand, you also have the option to potentially break it in bad ways. So, um, does this all run like what on like a MySQL backend and yeah, all that Word, good stuff? Like Word everything Pre- does. <clears throat> of course, WordPress uses MySQL for the backend. Um, it, you know. All of the WordPress blogs I've ever run have been, you know, on assorted Linux servers of such. Um, I would imagine that if you loaded all the appropriate software up on Windows, you could do it there too, although I'm not quite sure why you would. But uh, So you've got different options with the hosting. Uh, but, you know, like any software, it's not perfect. I mean, you know, I, I love WordPress for what it is and what it does, but occasionally, you know, I get frustrated with it just like anything else. But so, overall, it seems to be the best option out there from what I can see. Isn't there a third option, though? Isn't there, you can download the CSS, your, the CS, yeah, CSS, and can't you then upload it back to do your own design and still have it hosted by them, but you have to pay for that? Uh, yeah, I believe with, with the WordPress.com hosting, if you use the base features, it's totally free. They have a few things that you can purchase as add-ons on like a yearly basis. Like if you want to use your own domain name instead of, you know, camichaos.wordpress.com, you can do that. Um, Yeah, there's a premium option that for X amount of dollars per year, you have complete control over your CSS style sheet. So that's kind of a middle ground where you don't have to worry about like the database maintenance or upgrading the blog server software, Mm -hmm. but you get a little bit more control over the layout and the theme. That's what I'd want to do, because I don't want control. Um, We have a question from the studio audience. Well, it's not really a question. It's just that, uh, and this is Verso, by the way, because I know I'm bad about introducing myself. Um, Another option that is available on a couple of uh, WordPress blogs that I'm managing right now is um, there are some hosting accounts that give you a one-click install option. So there are some you can buy a domain name and have it hosted by a company and then that company may give you the option of if you would like a blog installed on your domain then go here and click this box and then it does all of that for you which is about halfway I guess between having something hosted at wordpress.com and having to go and do all of it yourself. I can tell you as someone who's done all of it myself and not someone who spends a lot of time doing deep in the guts sort of server administration that if you can basically abide by the manual, RTFM, as we say when we're, ne- when we're nerds, 
Um, if you can look at the instructions and follow the instructions competently, you can do it. And I know that because I've done it. They have the infamous five minute install or something that they call it. And it literally takes that long as long as you have broadband. Yep. So f- five. So, so just, how, what's the skill set you need to, to, to install and run it? I mean, so the to, basic skill set. The basic skill set to install... If you're doing your standalone on your own server, so you bought a domain through whomever, you know, Media Temple or GoDaddy or whoever, you have a domain, you have your own hosting account, installing WordPress is pretty simple. The hardest part is manually creating the MySQL database ahead of time. But most major web hosts have a control panel interface where that's pretty simple. It's like, what username do you want to use? What database name do you want to use? Click this button. It's oh, done. So, so, if you, so you get your hosting set up and they've already got the MySQL service yeah, so, in a control panel. Excellent. So if you have a hosting account that has MySQL, you manually create the MySQL database. You edit one file in your WordPress. You know, so you download all the files from Automatic for the WordPress software. You edit one file called wp-config, and in it you put your database connection settings. You upload it all to the server, and you go to a URL and click a link that says install. And assuming you've given it the correct database information, it literally takes less than five minutes, and it says, congratulations, you have a WordPress blog. Go here to log in for the first time. Here's your you know initial username and initial password. Please change it. Um, but then you're set, and then you're into the WordPress control panel where you can start mucking with your theme or writing posts or whatever you want to do. So you're still using the same set of themes the same uh, templates that you would be using regularly if you just were on WordPress if you just went to a WordPress and made yourself a WordPress page when you go to wordpress.com they have a set of I don't know how many they're up to now I want to say it's probably 15 to 20 themes um, that you can choose from when you download the WordPress code to host it on your own I believe it comes with one or two themes I think there's like the ancient old WordPress theme, and then there's kind of the new shiny WordPress theme um, based on a design called Kubrick. Um, so you don't get like a huge package of themes, but the good news is there's a lot of themes out there. Um, WordPress actually has an official theme uh, theme browser where you can go browse, look at previews of a bunch of different themes, and there's a zillion good WordPress resources on the internet. Um, the official help documents... Uh, they call it the WordPress Codex. It's C-O-D-E-X dot WordPress dot org, I believe. Um, that's all their official help documents. There's some other really great blogs. Um, probably the biggest one, and it's very, very, very end user friendly and written in a way that, you know, people who are just, you know, authors, I just want to write, but I want my blog software to work, mm-hmm. um, is Laurel Van Fossen's blog, which is Laurel dot WordPress dot com. Um, and she's also our keynote speaker keynote speaker at WordCamp. Um, She's got a ton of great resources on everything from how to do themes to copyright issues to what's coming the next version of WordPress to, you know, how do you do link posts? How do you come up with ideas for blogging? It's it's a great resource. So again, to recap, so what are the key features I want? So what, what are the features that I get if I'm hosting this myself versus, you know, just going up to WordPress.com and, and, and getting a getting a um, an account, I mean, it, it just kind of boil it down. There, there's two big differences. One is that with hosting it yourself, you have complete control of installing whatever package themes you want. So you find any cool theme, you can download the theme files and upload it. That simple. The other one is plugins um, on WordPress.com. So I guess back up a little bit. So the WordPress base software has a set of functionality in it. There's also a plugin interface, much like, you know, Firefox has a plugin interface and all sorts of different software plugins. So plugins are little bits of, you know, third-party code that you can add in. There's plugins for spam comment trapping. There's plugins to enable open ID on your blog. There's plugins to automatically post, you know, your blog post to Twitter or your tweets to your blog or vice versa. So, so there's all these third-party plugins that plugins can do... Plugins to uh, have a Word, WordPress formatted iPhone format? There is. There's a plugin to Ooh, format your blog for yes. iPhone. There's, there's plugins to uh, use WordPress to host a podcast, for example, Ooh. which, you know, if you know anybody who's into podcasting, that might be something interesting to explore. 
Um, Actually, so, I think I think um, Hazelnut Tech Talk is doing that. I believe. I, I also know another podcast that's switching over to WordPress and has um, a very shiny, shiny helper that I think knows all about those things. Or many shiny helpers. Well, yes. Many shiny M- helpers. Many shiny helpers. One in particular that I was many thinking. Many shiny helpers. <laughs> <laughs> as many shiny helpers as we can get. Yeah. So so those are the two big differences, is themes and plugins. With WordPress.com, they have a set of plugins, but it's the ones that they've chosen to host. It's it's a lot of the real common stuff <laughs> like spam prevention and related post links and things like that, but... If you want to do something specific or obscure, maybe, that's not going to be of a general interest to everybody, um, you can't do that with WordPress.com. You would need to host your own. So um, what leading blogs do we have around? Oh, what, what a good... Actually, I... I There's a I, great post yeah, I was just on, a, say, on the Silicon Floors. On the Silicon Floors. I think it was 80 plus WordPress blogs. Yeah, Rick. Yeah. Rick put out a call on Twitter a couple was it yesterday or the day before. It said, you know, you've got a WordPress blog. Give me the URL, and he ended up with eighty or eighty plus WordPress blogs around the area that are using. You know, I think he ended up with three of mine <laughs> that are using WordPress, and it's a great look at all the different things you can do because you can do a lot with WordPress other than just your kind of standard your standard blog. There's a lot of configurability that can come into play there does seem to be a lot of variety yeah yeah there does <laughs> my, my big question is what was the hosting obviously the wordpress wordcamp site is on wordpress yeah that would be uh, i believe actually <laughs> uh, uh, reed beals did our theme and our design for the wordcamp website and i believe down in the footer it actually says powered by wordpress duh <laughs> <laughs> i have a question Every time I look at a WordPress blog, I know that there's this little itty bitty smiley face on all the ones that I guess aren't customized. Have Have you seen? Do you know what I'm talking about? Um, where at? Uh, up in the upper right, I see this little smiley face. It's like the you know semicolon in the parenthesis. I'm, no, I'm not not making it up. I first saw it on one person's blog. Those are blog. cold pills talking. <laughs> it's not the cold pills talking. <laughs> I first saw it on one person's blog, and I thought, oh, how cute. I wonder how they put that there. But then as I started looking at other WordPress blogs, I started to notice that they were all over them. I, it looks like Verso has an answer for us. Well, from the chat room, Reed says that it's a uh, statistic counter. That there's some sort of statistic thing that it's doing. See, it wasn't the cold pills. Time. So how? No. So Not tell us about. So I noticed, and maybe I got this wrong, but is how does WordPress differ from from Drupal? That might be a, a crazy idea, but is there is there some <laughs> some differences there? Because I've noticed there's a lot behind Drupal so as well. What I'm going to say, and then I'll turn it over to Versa, who's excitedly raising her hand over here, is that. I've never actually done anything with Drupal, um, other than my understanding is that Drupal is designed as more of a general content management system for kind of any sort of online content, so it has a whole bunch of different things that, in theory, it can manage equally, like photo hosting or news posts or blogging or just you know general online stuff, uh, whereas WordPress was originally designed primarily as a blogging engine, and... You can make it do other things like, you know, using WordPress as your CMS, but ultimately kind of its core purpose was as a blog engine. Uh, actually, in, in our office, um, it's something that we're working on on converting a portion of our website over to. So I spend a lot of time with both. So um, it's basically what you said. The, the focus of Drupal is I want to build a website and I want to be able to manage that website easily, and the barrier of entry should be very low for getting content up and having it be consistent. Like if you're doing a lot of repetitive pages, if you have products that you sell or something like that, and you need to be able to generate a page that looks the same over and over and over again with maybe a slightly different product picture or a little bit different description, but the page is going to look essentially the same. Then this is the, then Drupal is the sort of thing for that that really makes that easy and makes it a lot easier for people who aren't necessarily web designers to generate content for the web. Um, 
the focus of it is a site like it's it's a lot broader than what specifically wordpress is wordpress is essentially built to give you a place to put short semi-frequent updates up on a page you know one time and there are ways around that and there are a lot of people who are using wordpress to serve a lot of the purposes that a drupal install would serve but it doesn't end up um they do have a, a slightly different focus so cool. i hope that was at least a little bit insightful <laughs> that was a good explanation right so um <laughs> So please excuse the host. I, I'm on cold medication this evening. Thanks. I'm having a hard time keeping up. So we want to we want to just highlight uh, where to get the info on WordCamp on the website. WordCampPortland.org, and I'd like I'd like Aaron to run through the the list of speakers, the scheduled speakers. Right. Okay. Now this is where I forget one and feel really bad. So. Uh, hopefully not forget any. So we're going to kick off the day. Our keynote speaker is Laurel Van Fossen, who is a WordPress guru. Um, she, like I said, she writes at laurel.wordpress.com. Um, she's going to talk about how WordPress is changing lives. And I'm really excited to hear what she has to say. Apparently, she hasn't even given this talk yet, and other future WordCamps are already requesting her to come and give it. And... Um, for those of you who are going to be at WordCamp, uh, bring your cameras. Um, it's going to be an interesting presentation. I know a little bit about what she's planning to talk about and do, and bring your cameras. It'll be worth it. Um, after that, uh, Betsy Richter, who's kind of a local blog celebrity and the founder of RPDX Networks, is going to talk about how she took... RPDX and went from waking up one morning with the idea of building a really cool Portland group blog um, and took that from concept to execution in eight days as far as you know building the infrastructure, recruiting authors, developing content, theming, plugins, search engine optimization, marketing, all that kind of stuff. She's God, the creator of blogs. Mm -hmm. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I know you guys had her like on like one week. Yeah, you guys had her on Strange Love, you know, a few weeks ago to talk about that, but she's going to run through that um, in a talk with the group as just here's everything we can do to get up to speed on WordPress in a week. Um, after Betsy talks, we're going to go into um, our first round of breakout sessions. So we'll have everybody together. Then we're going to break out, and we've got three different sessions where we've got three different pre-planned talks. Um, these are probably the ones I might forget. Uh, real quickly, I'm talking about an introduction to copyright for bloggers. Um, Kelly is going to talk Ooh, about... That's, that's, I think that's going to be a really good one. Yeah. That, it, I saw that on the thing. That You'll be going to that presentation, Cammie. Uh, apparently, I'm being sent I won't to that be at, presentation. Yeah, I won't be at Word. But, uh, it's, it's an important topic if you don't absolutely. want to go to federal prison. Oh, um, oh geez. <laughs> I think Dr. Normal was more interested in how to copyright our material. Yeah. Well, and, no, not just that, though. I mean, it's it's also, you know, creative. I imagine you're going to get into creative commons. And, yeah, I'm yeah. going to. Uh, there's a lot of things to talk about related to copyright, and I'm certainly not going to be able to cover them in 45 minutes. So my plan is to kind of give a quick introduction and then see what people want to talk about. But hopefully we can kind of get through at least the basics of, as a blog author, what do you need to know about the copyright of what you're producing? And then also, how does that relate to other content you may pull in if you want to quote articles, reproduce articles, uh, use photos that you find on the web or on Flickr? Can you pull those into your blog posts? And then also, uh, we'll talk a little bit about, you know, what do you do if you find that somebody has ripped off your content and is reproducing it without permission? So, so that should be interesting. Um, Kelly's going to talk about a high-level introduction to choosing a theme. Um, she's... Why is she shaking her head no? Um, because, I'm looking, because I'm looking at the schedule, that's why. Well, at some point you're going to talk about it. That's true, I am. Um, <laughs> but does it not compete so, with the copyright? No. Fantastic. No. So Kelly's talk um, is going to be from the standpoint that she's helped create a lot of, you know, she's been involved with several blogs from the beginning. And depending on the point of your blog, you're going to want different considerations as far as what's the focus of your theme, whether it's a like a corporate company blog or just a general fun blog or, you know, a personal journal. So she's going to talk about that. Uh, we also have another topic specifically related to theming, 
Um, probably a little bit more technical, uh, Eric Amundsen is going to talk about using Firebug and some other free tools to uh, develop and debug your theme. So once you've got kind of a base theme and maybe you want to tweak it a little bit, maybe you want to change the colors or move some things around or make fonts bigger or things like that, Eric's going to talk mm-hmm. about some tools for that. Um, And I know I'm way out of order here, but at this point, um, Justin Kistner, who is kind of a social media marketing communications guy for Voce Communications, is going to talk about using WordPress to manage, I believe his term is a social relations campaign, Um, which sounds really abstract, but essentially what it is, is how Justin is using WordPress with his company, which is a you know communications marketing communications company, and using WordPress as a tool to manage their marketing communications. So, a very non-traditional use of WordPress, but and he pro- he actually talked about this a little bit at a beer and blog uh, a couple months ago. Should be interesting. Um, who else do we have? We have uh, Marshall Kirkpatrick, who is one of the authors for Read Write Web, which I think is like the number eight or number nine most linked blog on the internet right now. Wow. Marshall is an RSS guru, which is really simple syndication. It's the whole subscribing to a feed concept. Mm -hmm. Marshall is going to talk about, um, I believe the session title is Feed Your Blog with RSS, and it focuses on how to use RSS feeds and subscriptions to come up with content for your blog. So, mm, nice. I love me some good RSS. Mm. It, mm, it's it's tasty. Yeah, that's right. Um, so, you know, if you're looking for things to write about, how do you know what your competitors are writing about? How do you know what people are writing about you? Things like that. So that should be an interesting topic. Laurel is going to teach one of the breakout sessions. She's going to talk about Woopra, which is a relatively new blog statistics and analytics package. It's free. Uh, Works with WordPress. Um, She's been involved with that and has lots of good stuff to share. Uh, Woopra, um, a lot of people I know I'm sure are familiar with like Google Analytics as far as tracking your stats. Uh, Woopra, from what I've seen, is very focused on what's happening right now. What, you know, what's this big spike in traffic that I'm getting? You know, how's my latest post doing? Things like that. Whereas Google is, from my opinion anyway, is better at tracking longer trends over time. Uh, let's see, who else is speaking? Um, Dane Hesseldahl, who's a local designer, is going to talk, and developer, is going to talk about creating a WordPress plugin from scratch. So this one's targeted more towards the developer audience, but if you know you know, a little bit about PHP or you, know, you like editing text files and things like that, um, Dane is going to build a plugin from scratch during his session. I don't know what it's going to be about, so that'll be a big surprise. Who knows? Um, okay, let's see. What else? Who am I forgetting? Kelly I'm, is over here looking at the website, I'm sure. Who am I forgetting? I feel Josh. bad now. Josh. Josh Bancroft. Oh, from, oh yeah. Um, so Josh Bancroft that would is be at J.A. Bancroft at for J. those Bancroft of you who on only interact with him on Twitter. Yes. Josh is going to, his session title is Tying Your Tubes with WordPress, um, which is what we came up with as the shorter version of the really long one he sent me originally. He's going to talk about integrating your content from different services across the web into your WordPress blog. So when you post photos on Flickr and your tweets on Twitter and you Talk about, you know, you use FriendFeed maybe to aggregate a bunch of your content together. How can you pull that content back into your Twitter or into your WordPress blog in a way that it's useful and helpful and not really obnoxious, you know, so it's not like you're creating a new blog entry every time you post a tweet every 20 minutes or something. So uh, Josh is going to talk about that. Um, You only tweet every 20 minutes? Well, (laughs) you you have to pace yourself. So... Who else, Speak who for else yourself. Have I, who else have great. I forgotten, Kelly? Anybody? Chris O'Rourke. Chris. Uh, Chris is another local developer designer type guy. Chris is going to talk about... I can't really tell from his description if this is another Power Geek session or if this is something no, for everyone to enjoy. This is more of a general audience. Chris, uh, okay. I believe his session title is 10 or Top 10 Plugins to Make Your Blog Pop or yes. something along those lines. Um, these are, this is not writing your own plugins from scratch. This is just kind of, here are some cool plugins that are out there that you may or may not have heard of that you can integrate into your blog. Here's what they do. Here's where to go get them. So this is more of a general audience kind of thing. Have I gone over my time limit? 
Do we have anyone else? Who Any else? Other speakers? Uh, well, Quickly. First and, then, uh, oh, we and then I did forget a big left. one. I just realized I forgot one of the biggest ones. And then um, the other biggest one. And then the other biggest one. So yes. I, I did forget to talk about the panel amongst Ooh. others. <laughs> you will have a panel. We will have a panel. Uh, I love a panel. a panel. We're calling it the Ask the Experts panel. Uh, we're going to have Laurel Van Fossen, um, Chris O'Rourke, Justin Kistner, and Rick Tarosi. Um, what's a panel without Rick? Well, yes. Exactly. You, you can't have a local blogging event without Rick. Um, or a panel. Or without a panel. Rick on a panel. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. There is no agenda for that. We're going to put four people up at the front of the room and field questions from the audience. Anything WordPress or blogging related is fair game. We've cool. put people on there who have a variety of backgrounds. So it sounds like, so just just jump in. It sounds like you'll be talking about some of the kind of the internals of WordPress, kind of how to make Word, you know, you know how to functionally make WordPress happen. But you'll also be talking about kind of blogging and WordPress changing lives and, you know, it, it'll run the, the entire spectrum. Right. One of the goals when I, we started putting this together and looking at speakers and sessions was we wanted to come up with a wide range of content that would appeal to, you know, everybody from people who just want somewhere to write their blog posts. They want a publishing platform, you know, as well as the people that want to go in and hack on that publishing platform and write plugins from scratch kind of thing. So we've got a variety of topics. The one big speaker that I left out um, is a late edition. Only found out this week when I got an email at about 9 o'clock at night saying, hey, would you be interested in this? Um, uh, apparently with WordPress Portland selling out and getting lots of buzz in the blogosphere, uh, the folks down at Automatic decided that it would be awesome to send somebody from their company up to WordPress up wow. to WordCamp Portland. Uh, so I got an email from uh, Jane Wells, who's a user experience person for Automatic, and she's going to be up here, and she's going to give a behind-the-scenes sneak peek at the next version of WordPress. There's a bunch of changes coming as far as the user interface, some of the administrative options, um, some new just you know features, things to have, and so Jane's going to give us a tour of that, um, which will be very, very exciting, and I think will be interest to everybody. Very cool. Sounds very cool. Um, it's well, going to be exciting, and it sounds like a a uh, pretty action uh, packed uh, seminar. Yeah. This was the part of the show where I was planning on saying, if you're not already signed up for WordCamp Portland, you should get signed up right now. But the fact of the matter is, is if you're not signed up for WordCamp Portland, you're not going. Saturday, September twenty seventh, eight thirty a.m. to nine p.m. at Cube Space. Mm -hmm. Find out more at wordcampportland.org. Good night, everybody. Thank you so much, Aaron, for joining us. Thank you. It's been fun. Bye.